Hello, my name is Jay Dawson. I'm the Fiber Technologies Group Leader at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. I want to talk to you today about uh, an optical fiber fabrication facility we've recently brought online at, uh, at Lawrence Livermore and how it might uh, help you uh, in, uh, in developing technologies for one of your projects. So optical fibers and fiber lasers have a lot of advantageous properties. Uh, fibers transport light over very long distances with extremely low loss. They're robust and flexible. Uh, you don't have to worry about precision optics lines, alignments. Uh, they operate in extreme environments and they're sensitive to electromagnetic interference. Uh, so you can, you can put them in places where you might want, not want to put, for example, a wire or a, uh, an electrical cable. Uh, recently, within the last 20 or 30 years, people have uh, demonstrated that you can actually amplify light in these fibers and make fiber lasers. And these fiber lasers uh, are widely used in industry now. Uh, they're low maintenance, they're high reliability, they have excellent efficient wall plug efficiency, and they can get very high powers. But there's still uh, research and development opportunities there and, and, and chances and opportunities to, to do novel enhancement of those types of fibers. That's one of the things we're, we're interested in. So this properties of optical fibers, the fact that they guide light over long distances, that they're flexible, that they operate in harsh environments, uh, that you can make lasers out of them, they're enabling I believe for a lot of industrial applications. The telecom one is obvious, that's what they were, were developed for, and there's still an enormous amount of work, uh, research, and, and opportunities there. Uh, one of the things we've become interested in uh, in my research group recently is, is the ability of these fibers to potentially deliver high average power and high pulse energy light for, into uh, to difficult to reach places. So you could visualize that you have a, a bulky, large laser outside uh, in some point you couple your light from that laser into an optical fiber and then you can do clever things like potentially uh, insert it into a human body through a catheter and, and do, uh, do basically surgery with uh, incredibly small uh, uh, incisions. Um, you, if you have an industrial part uh, that you need to weld or cut in some hard to reach place or maybe you need to fix something, you could visualize uh, inserting one of these fibers through a catheter and delivering a laser light uh, into a very difficult to reach place. Um, you know, high power fiber lasers are, are a source of ongoing development and we think there's still a lot of clever things that can be done with fiber designs to enable those high power uh, lasers. And then another area that uh, was, uh, was greatly researched in the, uh, the 90s and, uh, and I think is starting to come back today is the area of, of fiber optic sensors and basically f optical fibers I have a number of advantageous properties for sensors. You can make distributed sensors with them uh, that where the, a cheap piece of fiber is, is stretched out over a very long distance or across a, a large area and you can sense uh, properties of things, uh, temperature, uh, sound for example. Uh, they are good for harsh environments so there's a lot of interest in the oil and gas industry and in putting them in, in downhole wells. Uh, they're insensitive to, uh, to electromagnetic interference in general uh, nonetheless, there are, uh, and this is somewhat, uh, you know, uh, the opposite of what I just said, uh, you can use them to sense current and voltage if you set them up properly and then use them to take that light, you can take the light that, from that sensor and, and bring it back to ground uh, without conducting the current or the voltage. So th these are just a few examples of a wide array of, of applications in, in tr light transport sensors and components for laser systems that I think uh, means that uh, there's a lot of uh, new opportunities and, and new applications in fibers that uh, are going to drive research in this area uh, for some time to come. So optical fibers, uh, again, they were originally developed for the telecom industry. The primary things the uh, telecom people worried about uh, were extremely low loss uh, so that the light would be guided over very long lengths without having to be stopped for a repeater or be amplified in an optical fiber. And then the ability to carry very high bandwidths so that you can communicate, uh, you, can, you can carry lots of telephone calls or lots of internet data. And you know, the telecom industry has focused on optimizing optical fibers for that specific applications. And that's, that has led to fibers that are roughly 125 micron in diameter with, with notionally a, uh, a 10 micron core and, and, and preferentially guide at 1550 nanometers. Uh, now one of the interesting things that ha happened in the late 90s is that University of Southampton uh, said, hey, you know, everybody so far has been, been making fibers using total internal reflection as the, uh, as the guiding principle. And that means 
Uh, you basically create a round fiber with, uh, with a different material in the center. Uh, so you're basically building these things uh, via a chemical process. But what they showed is you can also use diffraction. And one of the things about diffraction is, is that you, you basically create a periodic array of holes and, and you guide in the, uh, the solid bit in the center. And in the process of, uh, of developing that concept and that fiber, they developed something called the stack and draw process. So the fiber you see on the right is made by basically drawing a bunch of rods and tubes, uh, stacking them, and then redrawing them into a specific uh, shape. And I'll talk uh, in a lot more detail about how that works here in a minute. We now have a dedicated R&D facility that permits a lot greater risk taking using the stack and draw process. And I'd like to take you through an example of of how that works. And so the specific example I'm going to use is a project that we did a, a year or so ago in slab fiber waveguides. And the idea here was to create a waveguide that has the potential to have powers even greater than kilowatts uh, with, uh, with good optical beam quality, meaning it can be focused to a diffraction limited spot. And the, the key to that is, was to change the geometry from a round fiber, which is what everyone in the telecom universe makes, uh, to something that has a rectangular or slab core. Uh, you see that uh, the final fiber from that project here in this slide in the center. Uh, the white line in the center is the core. It's 10 microns high by 120 microns wide. And it's surrounded by a, a cladding, where a, pump, a second cladding uh, that allows you to, uh, to couple pump light into it. And, and basically that diode pump light is turned into a laser beam. You see some of the laser results on the left. And you see the, uh, the optical uh, field that comes out of the fiber uh, on the right. So we had an idea for something that we believed would uh, produce uh, a lot more power. So what do we do when we, when we have this idea? Well, first we take that idea and we turn it into a computer model. That's what you see in this slide. Uh, so we created a number of proposed designs, such as what you see on the left. Uh, those proposed designs are turned into finite element models. The finite element models are then used to uh, calculate the optical properties, which you see the calculated properties on the right. Uh, these are a bunch of calculated waveguide modes or optical uh, outputs you would expect from the design on the left. Uh, once we have that design, we take that design that's a computer design and we turn it into what we call a manufacturing design where we say, okay, we want you know, holes or specific uh, you know, optical elements at uh, specific locations. How are we going to do that? Uh, and we say, okay, well, we're going to build that up out of uh, rods and tubes of these size, and we're going to use these types of rods and tubes, and that creates uh, a manufacturing design, which is what you see on the right in this slide. So at that point, we use what we call the stack and draw process, which again was originally developed at University of Southampton, uh, to fabricate these optical fibers. So you see our draw tower on the right of the slide. Uh, the draw tower is 8.2 meters high. It can draw rods and tubes of 1 to 3 millimeters diameter at roughly uh, 10 meters a minute uh, with 1 micron precision in the diameter control. Uh, and then it can also draw uh, optical fibers from 80 microns up to a few hundred microns um, at speeds of up to 120 meters a minute. And one of the other things it does is when we draw it into a fiber, we can also coat the outside of it. Uh, with a polymer in order to help it retain its strength uh, over long periods of time. So how, do we, how does the stack and draw process work? We start with raw material that's typically a few silica rods and tubes that are roughly an inch in diameter or a meter long. Uh, that rod material also may be some sort of specialty glass depending on the, the specific design. It might be more complex than the ribbon fiber design I've shown. Or it might be a laser glass. Uh, those one inch diameter rods and tubes are drawn into the roughly one millimeter diameter rods and tubes uh, with very fine diameter control uh, on, the, uh, on the tower. Those rods and tubes are then stacked into the manufacturing design you saw on the last slide. You can see the technician stacking in the middle and the end of the stack in the middle lower, the middle lower section. And then that, uh, that stack is, uh, is sleeved in an outer tube and the entire assembly is put back into the tower and we basically pull a combination of vacuum and we also uh, puff up the holes and, uh, at the top and then at the bottom we're pulling these things into optical fibers. Uh, the end product uh, looks something like what you see on this slide. 
So we started out with that, uh, that computer-based design. And uh, you know, we went through the stack and draw process. So this took a few days and created the fiber you see on the left, uh, which is a, a periodic array of holes with uh, a bunch of solid uh, rods in the center. Um, we then lit that fiber up with a laser. And you see that uh, the output of the fiber on the lower right uh, in terms of the near field and the far field of the optical mode that comes out. And in the, uh, the upper right, uh, you see the actual, the original computer model now in black and white instead of color. Uh, in the near and the far field there, what you should get. And what we found is that, you know, the agreement was actually, with theory, was actually pretty good. And, uh, you know, in fact, uh, this scheme of, uh, of the stack and draw process can lead you to excellent control and we can usually hit uh, a design within an iteration or two uh, in terms of the optical properties that, that you're looking for. Uh, so we've actually fabricated a number of fiber designs since commissioning the tower in 2012. Uh, I can't show you all of them, a lot are, are covered under proprietary agreements, etc. Uh, but there are a few here. We've done a UV rad hard fiber for NIF. Uh, you see the passive and the active ribbon fibers that I showed in our example. And one of the things that's happening that we're very excited about right now is we have an internal project, and these are preliminary fibers you see on the right, uh, and looking at uh, hollow core optical fibers and figuring out how to scale the energy and average power that transport through these fibers uh, for things like uh, machining in difficult to reach places or potentially uh, surgery for the medical applications. In terms of currently funded fiber development programs, uh, we have the hollow core waveguides for the high power transport and high energy transport. We have a program to look at new laser gain materials or laser gain materials that aren't commonly uh, addressed. So there's a lot of work in lasers in, at one micron, at one and a half microns, and two microns in fibers. We're looking at stuff that's, uh, that's shorter than a micron. Uh, that might have applications outside of uh, the spaces people normally think. Uh, we've been looking a lot at UV radiation hard fibers for NIF. So this is a challenging problem because the fiber needs to guide now both in the UV and withstand a high radiation environment. And then we have a number of SBIR collaborations, two in the defense area and one in the medical area. And we work with both large and small companies. And basically, if you have an idea or an application, we're happy to work with you to develop uh, you know, a joint proposal uh, where you know, we can let you know kind of how much it will cost uh, to do something and what a, a notional schedule would look like and, and whether something's physically possible or not. And, and, you know, we're, and we're honest, we'll, we'll let you know if we may not necessarily be the right partner for you, but if we're not, we'll, we, we can probably direct you to uh, someone who is. So a lot of the R&D we've done uh, is being published in the best peer-reviewed optics uh, journals and conferences. Uh, you see uh, an example of uh, some of that stuff here. Uh, we've uh, we've d d written a paper on, uh, uh, on fiber laser limits. Uh, that's how we ended up uh, thinking about the ribbon fiber, because uh, it was a way to overcome the, the physical limitations of the telecom style fiber in terms of, of scaling average power of, uh, of fiber lasers. We've shown that uh, we can launch complicated waveguide modes into those fibers, uh, get them out and unscramble them back into a diffraction limited beam. Uh, and we've, uh, we've designed a number of new types of fibers, which uh, I don't have the time to go into here. And then one of the things we're doing is, is we're developing actually a fiber with a thousand different cores uh, as a specialty fiber development project for the National Ignition Facility. Right now, we're in a pretty good position. We have a strong team of people who have uh, experience in fiber development from industry, who have come to the lab and interested in doing things that are, are further out there, so to speak. Uh, we have an excellent facility. It's a, it's a world-class uh, fiber draw tower. Um, and you know, most importantly, I, I feel we have the flexibility and motivation to work on stuff that are, that are out of the box designed. So things that that uh, you, know, you might be able to have a commercial vendor fabricate for you, but the commercial vendors may be less interested in pursuing some of these things in the early stages of development um, because they, they involve greater risk taking than, than perhaps a, a standard vendor would, would like to work with. So we bring a wide array of expertise to these new fiber developments. Uh, we're very open about how things are, are manufactured within our facility, what the process is and what the limitations are. 
Uh, we feel that's important in working with collaborators because that allows the collaborators to understand uh, really what the limits are so that, and that can feed back and, and inform your your development processes and, and it's always always important there and so you know I think the basic question is you know do you have a problem where you think a novel optical fiber can can help solve and if so uh, I encourage you to contact us either myself or Catherine Elizondo uh, in our industrial partnerships office thank you very much